Alonzo, Plutus, Catalyst, Peer to Peer, everything in the Cardano Word salad, we have updates on them all. Also, a new exciting partnership and some details on how to get signed up for the Cardano Gogan Summit later this year. It's time for the weekly recap. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today it's time for the weekly recap, Cardano 360 edition. We have a bunch of updates and a lot of different things, and stick around till the end, we'll show you how to register for the Gogan Summit. So let's do a quick stake pool update and jump right in. As always, we want to start off by saying a huge thank you and welcome to this week's newest delegators. We truly appreciate your support, and we're really excited to go on this journey with you. Let's keep growing together. So the biggest Cardano news this week came from the June Cardano 360 presentation. As always, we'll cover some of the highlights here, but what we'll also do is link down below links straight to the Cardano 360 at the different chapters for the different sections so you can dig in and watch each full segment if you'd like to. So they didn't waste any time and they jumped straight into the part that everyone's going to be asking about, how are we doing with the road to Alonzo? So Nigel, the head of delivery for these projects, goes into some detail on where we're at with the Alonzo roadmap. As we mentioned in previous recaps, the Alonzo rollout is actually happening in several distinct phases, starting with blue, then white, then purple, then a couple of concurrent phases leading up to the hard fork for the Alonzo mainnet. So where are we today? So currently, the partners in Alonzo Blue are working with just the CLI layer, the command line interface layer. And the idea is as they transition to white, they'll be able to have access to the data list backend and the application backend. But again, the whole point of Blue was to get just some core experts in and test the base level functionality before it opens up to larger audiences. So as he said, we're within a couple of days to maybe about a week before the transition is officially done from blue to white, which is really more of just like a ceremonial transition, right? Where we just say, okay, now it's open for more people to come in. And if we look again at the original schedule, the idea for blue was to wrap up sometime near the middle or end of June leading into July, and then white starting up after that. So it looks like as of right now, things seem to not only be going well, but also along with the originally projected schedule that we talked about a couple of recaps ago. And so a big part of the Alonzo rollout and these additional stages later on with other folks coming in and testing. And obviously once we get past that point and we're on the mainnet, the way that it all works is with people actually writing Plutus, the smart contract language for Cardano, to actually get these dApps or decentralized apps out there and running and solving real problems. If you're interested in writing these smart contracts, then maybe you should be a Plutus pioneer. We talked about a couple of recaps ago about all the details of the Plutus Pioneers program. And at the time, as we mentioned, that cohort was closed. But if it's something that you're interested in, there was a section here where they talked about how you also can be a Plutus Pioneer. And so starting July 1st, there'll be another cohort of the Plutus Pioneers program. So for Seth or anyone else out there in the community that's been waiting for these new cohorts to open up, you can come to this website here, we'll link it down below, and you can submit your application to be a Plutus Pioneer for the cohort starting on July 1st. So the next big section, which we've talked about a little bit in the past, is peer-to-peer. And so if we look at why is peer-to-peer -peer important, let's look at the three fundamental pieces of decentralization. And so there's actually three parts here. The first part is block production. And this is through actually like staking and decentralizing how these blocks are produced. When D hit zero a couple of months back and all stake pool operations were being done by community operators and none being done any longer by IOHK, we achieved the first portion of decentralization with decentralized block production. The next piece that you need is decentralization of the actual network, which is then those producers, how do you decentralize them finding and communicating with each other? That's where peer-to-peer -peer comes in. Right now, currently, for all stake pools in the network, including ours, the way this communication actually works is that each stake pool has a core or block producing node, and that sits behind one or multiple relay nodes. Those relay nodes are the ones that communicate with other relay nodes across the network, and this is how the validation of transactions happens. However, currently, the list of these relays that you connect to to be able to find and communicate with other relays in the network is centralized through a central portal that we all connect to to get lists of other relays that we can talk to. So even though we are communicating with nodes all across the globe and all across the network, which themselves are decentralized, it is a centralized funnel to find out who those nodes are. So the second leg in decentralization is decentralizing how these nodes find each other through true peer-to-peer. -peer. 
The idea here being that the nodes themselves decide the other nodes they're going to talk to and keep a list of nodes from hot to cold in terms of which they can rely on, which have given them good information, and which they haven't heard about in a while. The third pillar, by the way, after we decentralize block production and decentralize the network with true peer-to-peer, -peer, is decentralizing governance. And this is what all of us have been participating in with Project Catalyst. Project Catalyst is the testing grounds for the true Voltaire rollout of self-governance. And we'll talk about that much more when we get there. But let's dig in a little bit more into this peer-to-peer. -peer. As part of the presentation, they had on the line Duncan, the technical architect. And he was talking through how the peer-to-peer -peer rollout is actually going. And we can see here all the major features that have been completed. The nodes are fully integrated, they're running as test relays, and they're now preparing to do all of this on public test nets. Duncan talked through this animation that we had showed you all a couple of recaps ago. We focused more on watching this node pop around and connect to all of the different relays in real time and on its own in a truly decentralized way. But the interesting piece that he was talking about is here on the left, we can see this sorting in real time of how many times this little green node has connected to the other nodes and there's a real-time tracking of that hot to cold list that we were talking about, where this node now knows, oh, these pools are reliable pools that I can connect to to get validations back and forth, so these are the hot ones that I'm always going to look at. Whereas these down here at the bottom I'm not talking to very often, so those are the first nodes that would be considered to be dropped off of the list, and then some other randomly selected ones would be added back in, and then the sorting continues in that fashion. So looking at what's next up for peer-to-peer, -peer, we can see here that they're going to invite some selected stake pool operators to the testnet, get the feedback and results, then open it to a public testnet, and as he says, the rollout here needs to be careful and methodical because right now, even though the relay identification is going through a central point, everything is working very well. And so this whole thing of the dynamic peers finding each other, we need to be very, very careful that it's working exactly how it's planned so you don't have some unforeseen situation where maybe pools can't find other pools or things like that for validation. So this is one of those things that is important. It's being worked on in parallel with everything we hear about with Alonzo, but it's extremely, extremely important that it's done in a careful and methodical way. And it's uh, good to see that they're doing that and they're just doing this parallel testing along with everything else that's going on. Next, as always, a partnership and partners update. And while the IOHK team has some incredible partnerships going on, we wanted to highlight specifically this one, the Orion Protocol. And so now the Orion Protocol has a really, really interesting proposal on the problem they're trying to solve. As Timothea digs into here, what they talk about is, right now, if you think about it, depending on what is your preferred exchange, or if you like to use DeFi, or if you like to use different swaps, or if you're holding your assets in cold storage in a hardware or software wallet, all these things are completely disparate, right? And they're all spread out in different ways. And if you want to move things from one to the other, it's an extremely manual process where you have to say, okay, I'm going to go to my Binance account, and I'm gonna buy some ADA. And once I've done that, I'm gonna send it to my hardware wallet or my software wallet. Or maybe there's a certain altcoin that I want to buy and uh, they only have it on Bittrex. So for that transaction, I want to use Bittrex. Or maybe for Polkadot, I wanna buy that on Kraken. And so the argument she makes is that right now, the industry is still too siloed for mainstream adoption. There's this sort of intimidating barrier to entry where folks don't wanna come because there's so many steps involved. I mean, think about how many of us, like me included, right, were pretty intimidated when you first came into this space and there were so many things you need to learn. How do I find an exchange? Uh, okay, so I'm choosing Cardano. How do I find which wallet I want to use? Okay, I wanna use a hardware wallet. Which hardware wallet do I pick? There's so many different things. And then on top of it, once you've done that, all the exchanges and everything are all separate. All the blockchains are all disconnected. And so their proposal to solve this is the Orion Terminal, creating a single point of access to the digital asset market. And so their goal here is to make it that for all of the different centralized, decentralized exchanges and swaps and across all of the different blockchain protocols, you can, using their one portal, you can go there, buy whatever coins you want, you can swap them to any coins you want, and you can have them all living on your own personal hardware wallet. Their portal is what gives you access to all these different things, but at the end of the day, after all the trades and purchases are complete, it still comes back and lives on your own wallet. So a really, really exciting thing if they can pull it off the way that they want to and they can set up all these integrations and partnerships, but really cool to think that you can buy something on one exchange and potentially sell it on another, and you don't have to even necessarily have accounts on those exchanges. You would only interface through Orion, and it would then be sort of that middleware that would work out to all of these different endpoints for you. And the most important thing is that Orion will serve as a decentralized, non-custodial entry point. And so what those two things are is decentralized because it's not hosted in any one specific place. 
and non-custodial being they're not the ones holding your keys, you are. You can do all of this from your own hardware wallet once it's up and fully running. And if you're still kind of confused by the details of how keys and coins and wallets and everything all works together, we recommend that you check out our video specifically on that topic. It'll help you feel a little bit better about what's living where and why something like this is such an exciting opportunity to be able to bring all these things together, but still be in a non-custodial fashion. From there, there was a Cardano Foundation update. We'll skip past it, but we'll link it below if you wanna watch that section. And then there was a large chunk of time that was set aside for I think the first time we can recall where these Cardano 360 presentations have started focusing on NFTs. Now NFTs for a long time, and. <laughs> and long time is a relative term here, right? But for the whole lifetime of NFTs that we've heard about, they've always been associated with the Ethereum blockchain. But so now that Cardano is getting ready to be up and running on smart contracts, multi-assets and all these things are already here, the IOHK team is now starting conversations in earnest about what will NFTs look like on the Cardano blockchain. So some stats here, three years ago, the entire NFT market was only worth 42 million. By 2020, it had grown to 338 million, over a 700% increase. And since the most common example of a use case for NFTs are collectibles, the comparison they make down here is that the estimated size of the global collectibles market, so all things that people consider collectibles, cars, cards, things like that, is 370 billion. So looking at what's an idea for the market size that we can wrap our head around. And so NFTs in general were a long part of the presentation and all the different ways that they can work on Cardano, the different functions and problems that NFTs can serve and what they can solve. But for those of you that are newer to the NFT space and you're curious about, well, what are some of the things that are already going on with NFTs? I wanted to show you this section here where there were some really cool examples of NFT work going on right now on the Cardano blockchain. Hi, my name is Patrick and I'm the developer behind nftmaker.io, which is currently the easiest way for you to mint your own NFTs on Cardano. I was also involved in doing the distribution for the NFT projects, the Hoskinsons and Unsigned Algorithms. And the project that I'm working on right now and that I'm most excited about is actually version two of the NFT Maker, which is not only going to be a minting tool, but also a completely decentralized NFT marketplace running on Cardano, where you can simply mint your own NFTs, sell them or buy other NFTs. Hi, I'm Jess from Jess Art, a fine artist selling CNFTs and shipping the canvases off to real customers. Nice to meet you guys. Hey Cardano community, it's Alessandro, creator of SpaceBuds and operator of the Berry Pool. My biggest contribution so far to the ecosystem were the NFTs. I, I created this metadata standard back in January and after the launch of SpaceBuds, it got a lot of attention and yeah, we saw a lot more NFT platforms launch. Hey, I'm Jasper from the Cardano Space team. Cardano Space is the first NFTs with utility value on the Cardano blockchain. Um, with each NFT you buy, you get ownership over a piece of virtual real estate on cardanospace.com. You can use your NFT contr to control that space. You can upload an image, a URL, and a text message. And you can use it for anything you want, really. So really cool stuff. And all of this is before we even have smart contracts. So if you're interested in any of those projects that were shown there, make sure to check them out and support your local NFT creators here on the Cardano blockchain. Next, it was time for a project catalyst update with the familiar and friendly face of Dor. So Dor gave us an update here and some really cool stats on the latest going on with project catalyst and where we are with fund four and how we are planning on moving forward to fund five and beyond. So looking at some of those stats, we see that we're up 10% in participation relative to Fund 3. There are over 23,000 unique wallets that have participated in Project Catalyst so far, and 2.3 billion ADA was locked in during Fund 4 as part of the voting process. Then Dor gives us a reminder and says, hey, let's not forget that we are still, and by an ever-increasing margin, with Project Catalyst, the largest decentralized innovation fund on the planet. Really cool stuff. I mean, think about it. We're, we talk about regularly about all of these things and where Cardano is going and where it can get to, but sometimes it's easy to lose track of where we already are and what we've already done. So as a broader ecosystem and a larger community, right, for all of us that have registered and voted during Fund 4, Project Catalyst is already the largest decentralized innovation fund on the planet as of today already. That's so cool. But okay, for some of you that say, well, I missed Fund 4. How do I register for Fund 5? We got some dates for you. Fund 5 will start on July 8th and it will be controlling $2 million worth of ADA to be dispersed out to all the different accepted proposals. 
If you want to find out how to register and how to vote, check out our playlist that we did on that for Fund 4. The process will be exactly the same. And then for those of you that want to be even more actively involved and you don't want to just vote, but you want to actually submit your own proposals and try and get your own funding, Fund 6, which will be in August, will have $4 million worth of ADA assigned to it to be distributed to all of the different proposals. And that'll be happening in August. So then from there, we went into an IOHK research update. Again, we'll skip this, but we'll link it below. And the last piece that I wanted to show you guys was some really cool updates all snuck into the end there by Tim, our regular host that we always see on here. And some of these things might sound familiar. So that's very nearly it now for this month. A couple of quick updates before we go. For those of you who haven't watched it, Charles met Lex Friedman in an interview lasting nearly five hours where they talked about everything from the future of humanity to mushrooms. So make sure you check that out if you haven't managed to watch that already. And if you don't feel like sitting through five hours, check out our coverage of it from last week. Let's see what else we got. On the web front, we're delighted to announce we've recently relaunched our Cardano Docs document site. So if you're a developer and want to learn more about Cardano, that's the place to visit. Link in the description below. So for those of you that were asking during the live stream, hey, I want to be a stake pool operator. How can I do that? Remember, we sent you a link to exactly this site. So yeah, it looks like they've added some additional articles and functionality. And this is actually the section we were looking at together during the live stream about how to operate a stake pool. And now this is actually kind of impressive. Tim showing off his uh, fluent multi-language skills. Also on the subject of websites, we now offer Japanese, or in other words, IOHK no atarashi website wa nihongo mo arimas zehi goran kurasai yorashka onegai shimas. So our Japanese community, please check that out. And then finally, the big news that we've all been waiting for as well. Last but not least, the summit, the Cardano Gogan summit. We're delighted to announce that it's going to be happening at the end of September and a new landing page is now live for you to visit and register your interest. Okay, cool. So summit.cardano.org. So let's all go there, sign up. We'll hear about updates in real time. Uh, they haven't landed on it yet if there's going to be any in-person element of it or if it's going to be all online. Uh, but if it is a hybrid thing and some of us are allowed to actually show up, then let's see if maybe we can uh, we can meet up there. That'd be kind of fun. So it'll be end of September, but let's all go to summit.cardano.org and sign up there to get more information. If you missed this week's live stream, check out the replay. If you've already seen it, check out another one of our recent videos. Sign up for summit.cardano.org and let's all hear about updates and maybe meet up in person in September. If you want to chat in the meantime, join us in our Telegram group. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.